much practice time do you really have anyway? What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and like you, my practice time is pretty limited. Sometimes I only have a few minutes in a day, but I've discovered some techniques for maximizing those precious moments. Let's dig in, and you can download these routines and follow along in the description below. Okay, my 20 minute routine, and by the way, I have my practice app Modacity running at all times. I've done a bunch of videos that I'll link to about that. This is my bare bones routine. It's like a workout when I go to my club here. If I only have 20 minutes, I'm still gonna get something done. It's not going to be as much as if I have more time, but I have come up with a way where I can at least maintain and hopefully make a little bit of progress with those couple minutes. I start off every day with open strings, and a lot of it is what I'm thinking about, not just what I'm doing, what I'm focusing on. So I'm thinking big body motions. I start the G string, just play, no big deal, but I'm trying to think about my whole body, go for the D string. Like my friend Dennis Whitaker says on his amazing, incredibly useful exercises channel, I'm trying to think about making the string go fat. So I'm looking at the string and I'm trying to see how wide I can get that moving. Go over to the A string, same thing, go over to the E string, and the same thing. And then I go into, surprise, scales. If I only have a few minutes, scales are gonna be the thing that I do. I like practicing through the Stroken system that Hal Robinson put together it is awesome, but any sort of slow scales will do. So I like to go across the bass and I'll do G today, but I pick a different key every day. You should just go through the circle of fifths. Again, thinking about big body motions, making the string go fat, thinking about intonation. Probably adding a little vibrato, sprinkling it in here and there. All the way up the bass. I'll start slurring at a certain point. Thinking about beauty of sound. No matter where I am, what register. I also do arpeggios right out of stroking, but anything will work for that. And then more scales. And I got this idea from Nathan Cole, wonderful violinist in the Los Angeles Philharmonic. He practices groups of slurs, and then he practices separate bows, building up a little bit of speed, and then off the string strokes. And that's gonna get me ready for what I need to do, kind of keep the tools sharp, as it were. And so I start out, now I'm just doing two octaves, and I'm gonna do a simpler fingering. Start off slurring two notes. Then three notes, trying to use the whole bow. Keep doing it until I end up on a down bow for the low G. I wouldn't just be doing G every day, but I love G. What bass player doesn't? Now I go to fours. So I'm getting just slightly faster every time. And this kind of patting the head, rubbing the stomach exercise is awesome in my opinion. It really gets my brain in gear, gets my body engaged. And then I do separate bows. And I used to not do this, but Nathan kind of convinced me of this. And I'm just trying to work up a little bit of speed. I used to never practice fast stuff like that, and then Nathan talks about, you gotta practice fast to be able to play fast. So I don't push it too hard, but I just try to kind of get my limits going. It's just kind of like, again, going to the gym and just like adding a little more weight, just so I make some gains. And then finally, I do spiccato. I do a lot of orchestral playing, and this is kind of one of the tools of the trade. And I do four times per note, then three, then two, then one. Dennis Whitaker has an excellent 
series of going from eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one down. I will link up to that video and he's just got a wealth of resources on Spicato. Now I have to make a decision. Am I going to have a total technique day or I'm going to try to get some repertoire practice as well? And that depends on what's coming up. If I'm subbing with the San Francisco Symphony or if I've got a recital coming up, even though I've only got these 20 minutes or maybe even less, I'm going to try to work on something. But right now it's the summer. I don't have anything coming up. So I would just do total technique for those 20 minutes. So the rest of those minutes, and we've probably only got like eight to 10 minutes left at this point, I'm going to do something involving left hand dexterity. So I am using the wonderful fractal fingering by David Allen Moore right now, but I've done Tao of Bass. I've done uh, Simplified Higher Technique by Petrachia. I should do a video on that, by the way. So many great left hand dexterity exercises, and I will link up to a bunch of those in the description. And that's 20 minutes. I mean, more time is better, but I can get something done in 20 minutes. And just like if I only have 20 minutes to go work out, I will max that time and it's the same with bass and I'm trying to have consistency over having like one giant session then not practicing at all for a few days so I can always fit in at least five minutes you know so I would just kind of super reduce this but the important thing is just to get this stinking thing out and play it a few minutes each day for me if I've got 45 minutes this is what I think of as like my minimum amount of time to have a proper session so I can do my whole technique routine and I can fit in at least a bit of repertoire. I do everything in the 45 one that I did for the 20, I just add a little bit more to it. So I'll do the open strings, but I'll probably maybe do a couple slurs this time. I like to do simple things, but vary them endlessly. Boardwalk and I probably take a little more time, maybe go a little bit slower. Maybe run the arpeggios a couple times. You know, just what I did for the 20 minutes, just I have a little more breathing room. The left hand dexterity, I can dig into a little bit more. No big deal, but I just want to do a little bit of something every day on that. And then I get into stroking, which is right hand facility dexterity, bow chops. And I've done an entire video about that, which I will link up to. So I got the left hand going, I got the right hand going, and I like to do one etude a day. If I have the time, I've been going through the Sturm 110 etudes for forever. <laughs> I should probably do a video on why I like those so much. But one of these days or months or years, I'm going to actually move off of those and do other etudes. And etudes for me, they bridge the gap between what I think of as abstract technique and practical playing. So you'll take an aspect of a piece and flush it out and we could probably do a whole series on different etude books and that kind of thing. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want that. Then I get into repertoire and the way that I practice repertoire, I've done an entire video on that, how I try to actually get things done using deliberate practice. I will link up to that linking up to a lot of stuff here. Um, but really, I'm trying to get in, get out, get something accomplished. I don't want to start at the beginning and think, what am I going to do today? That's part of why that app Modacity I find so helpful because I build what I'm going to do at a different part of the day. And then when I sit down on the base, I just pull this out and boom, 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 go through my list, keeps me efficient. And if I don't want to practice, which I frequently don't, surprise, uh, I have something very specific that I can go through. If I have 90 minutes, now we're talking, I've got some time to stretch out and actually get things done. And this is what I'm ideally trying to get, but practically speaking, I maybe only get a one or two of these uh, a week, a 90 minute session, or even a two hour session or like that, that would be amazing. So I take all that technique and I stretch it out to be about 45 minutes. That's like the perfect amount of time for me to work on scales and that sort of thing. And again, I think of it as a workout. I'm trying to build my capacity as a bass player and that technique practice is just no substitute. And in this setting with 90 minutes, I take a break. <laughs> I find that any more than 45 minutes and my brain starts to turn off and that seems to be a good spot for a lot of folks. So I put the bass down for about five minutes, go get a drink of water, go pet the dog or whatever. And I come back and I finish out the rest of my practice session and Modacity will remind me to take a break, which I find helpful. And if I don't take a break, it's okay, but I feel like things start to build up and it's just nice to have a reset like that. That gives me a solid like 40, 45 minutes to get into a repertoire so I can hit a couple of different pieces. And if that recitals coming up. I could run something and record it. I'm trying to record myself a little bit every day, which I kind of hate doing, <laughs> but that's probably why it's good for me. And so I will record at least a chunk of something and I'm trying to just make sure that every day I'm getting a little bit better on what I'm working on. If I have more than 90 minutes, awesome. Two hours would be great. I rarely play more than two hours of bass a day. If I have a recital coming up, even if that's happening, maybe two and a half would be my maximum in terms of practicing. Uh, 
uh, and uh, practicing more than three hours a day in most cases, in my experience, at least talking to a lot of folks, it seems to be that that's where you hit the wall, at least with efficient practicing, deliberate practice. So that is my maximum for any day, but I rarely have that problem. It's usually, it's usually scrambling to get in 20 minutes. And if I don't even have 20 minutes, like I said, I can still get something done even with a couple minutes. It's amazing what you can get accomplished.